than a century, the Jehovah's Witnesses have been a common sight in and around town, going from door to door, taking their proselytizing to the streets, bus stops, street corners, anywhere that people can be found. Now with this landmark ruling, all of that may change, as the religion is coming under unprecedented criticism. I can't criticism. believe it. I just can't oh, believe it. What is it, Dan? You woke me up. Listen. This historic decision against what has been considered a basic religious freedom, the nationwide ban on the Jehovah's Witnesses, will take effect immediately. What? <sighs> this can't be. Mom? Yeah. Dad, what's going on? I was trying to sleep. Michael, Alyssa, be quiet. Listen to me. While this. there are no immediate reports of any sentences being imposed against those who were arrested last night, Authorities have made it clear that when one of Jehovah's Witnesses talks about his beliefs to others, this is a punishable crime, and it is expected that serious sanctions will be imposed. This is Kenneth Edwards reporting. Brenda, back to you in the studio. Thank you, Ken. And now, I can't believe Dan it. is meeting with mixed reactions, both from government officials and from the Jehovah's Witnesses. Mom, I'm scared. What's going to happen to us? Whew, Ted. I'm so glad it's you. Hello, Dan. Good morning, Maria. Michael, Alyssa, did you hear the news? We just saw it on TV. This can't be happening. How could things just change overnight? Brother Alderman, do you have any idea what's going on? We'd all better sit down. The decision was handed down yesterday afternoon. The meeting at the East Congregation was disrupted by police last night. Ten members of the congregation were arrested, and one was beaten. I can't believe this. At least, that's what I heard. Wait a minute. I still can't wrap my mind around this. Yesterday, everything was fine. You were out in service with us. This is a free country. How can something like this happen? And overnight? It took me by surprise too, Daniel. But we knew that sooner or later this would happen. I just didn't think it would happen today. Everything has been so calm here. Brother Olderman, are we going to be arrested? We don't know exactly how this will play out yet, Michael. But one thing is certain. We need to be prepared for the trials ahead. What will this mean for us, Ted? Will I lose my job? My home? My family? We'll have to wait to find out exactly what's going on. But remember, all of you, What's happening is exactly what has already happened in other places around the world. You mean like under Hitler? No. I mean right now, Alyssa. There are a number of places where our work is restricted or banned. What are we going to do? How are we going to get through this? The best thing we can do is what we've always done. Rely on Jehovah in prayer. And then listen to how he guides us through his word. What part of the Bible tells us how to react to all of this? Alyssa, can you get a Bible for me? Sure, Brother Olderman. <laughs> I think that all of us, myself included, can be strengthened by the account of Esther. She faced a situation that was similar to what we're facing right now. God's people back then were even faced with possible extinction. But Jehovah proved himself to be a God of deliverance. I have one for everybody. Good. Thank you, Alyssa. Now, everyone, turn to the book of Esther. Michael, do you remember where Esther lived? She lived in Persia. Yes, in Shushan with her cousin. Alyssa, do you remember his name? Um, Mordecai, right? That's right. Now, in a way, Esther was just like us. She led a calm and peaceful life. Until what happened? Until she was chosen to be queen, right? Her husband was King Ahaz... Ah... I never could pronounce his name. <laughs> Ahasuerus, not as easy to say as Michael, or Alyssa, or Ted. Daniel, can you start with chapter 2, verse 16? I'd be glad to. It says, Then Esther was taken to King Ahasuerus at his royal house in the tenth month, that is, the month Tebeth, in the seventh year of his reign. And the king came to love Esther more than all. Did you hear the news, Katura? Of all the young virgins who came in before the king, Esther was chosen. I am not surprised, Misha. She is well reported on by everyone, even by those who are hoping to replace Vashti. Did you ever see Vashti? I did see her once. 
just once, and I can tell you, she is nothing like Esther. In what way? Vashti is proud and haughty. People avoid her like a locust plague. But Esther, you just cannot dislike her or even be jealous of her beauty. She has it, but she does not flaunt it. Bow before Haman, first prince of Persia. Misha, look, it is one of the princes. Bow before Haman, first prince of Persia, by order of King Ahasuerus, bow before Haman. That was Haman. He has been exalted above all the princes, and he loves every minute of his glory. Do not say that. You know how he hates the Jews. Suppose he hears you. And that loud mouth with him? That was Jamshai, his attendant. He is almost as arrogant as Haman, if that could be possible. Misha, please. Well, I will tell you, Keturah. I have no respect for either of them, and Haman especially. The only person he wants to benefit is himself. But tell me, Arshan, how do the other women feel about Esther being chosen as queen? Are they upset with her? Are they jealous? Not at all, Mordecai. From what I hear, there has never been such peace in the house of the women. I am so glad to hear that. Esther does not use her charm like some other women. It is as if she is not even aware of it. She is modest, respectful, kind. Look, here comes Hathak. Yes, I know Hathak well. He is Esther's personal attendant. May you have peace, Hathak. You bring good news, I hope. I do. Harbona, court official of the king, has sent me to inform you concerning the word that you spoke against Big Than and Tiresh. Yes, and it was reported to the king by Esther. And a thorough investigation was made. Yes, Hathak? And what was the result? Big Than and Tiresh were hanged on a stake. The king has no tolerance for traitors. If you had not overheard those two men plotting in the king's gate, well, I fear to think what could have happened. May the king prosper, Hathak. But what is to be done for Mordecai for uncovering this plot against the king? I seek no reward. I did only what I thought to be proper. That may very well be, Mordecai, but Harbona said nothing of a reward. He too questioned the matter, but he feels that as an attendant, he has no right to speak up. But do not worry, Mordecai. He plans to refer the matter to Mimukin so that the princes can speak in your behalf. Ah, Prince Mimukin. May you have peace. May you have peace, Arsham. And you too, Mordecai. You speak well, Hathak. And what Hathak has just reported is true, Mordecai. But what the king will do to reward you, we do not know. A record has been made of your loyalty to the king. With all due respect, I am not looking for a reward. I did only what I viewed as my duty. I am sure that anyone else would have done the same. Perhaps not, Mordecai. Big Than and Tiresh are not the only ones who would like to see the king deposed. Please, Arsham and Hathak, could I speak to Mordecai alone? You are a good man, Mordecai, and a trusted servant at the king's gate. The exposing of Big Than and Tiresh is the talk of the king's court. I did only what seemed proper, but there is a matter that troubles me deeply. What is it? It is the matter of Haman the one who is now second only to the king. As you know, the king has made a commandment that everyone in the king's gate must bow down before Haman because he has been elevated above all the other princes in the kingdom. Yes, I'm aware of that. But you, Mordecai, you refuse to bow to Haman. Why do you refuse to obey the order of the king? In this one thing, I must. But why? Do you see my attendant standing over there? Yes, I know him. He is Hilkiah. Yes, Hilkiah. Haman hates Hilkiah. Do you know why? Because he is a Jew. He hates all Jews. But let me tell you something. As much as Haman hates Jews, he hates you even more. He is incensed that you refuse to bow down to him. I appreciate your warning, Prince Mimukin. But I cannot bow to Haman, even though the king has commanded it. But why? Why would you risk your life for such a little thing as... <laughs> Haman is coming now. Mordecai, I beg you to think about what you are doing. <clears throat> Mordecai, you despicable Jew. 
Why are you continually sidestepping the commandment of the king? I do not disobey the commandment of the king, Halen. I am a loyal subject of King Ahasuerus. All the king's orders I readily obey, but in this one matter, I cannot. How dare you refuse to obey the order of the king, to give honor to the one whom the king has exalted above all other princes? <laughs> you think you are better than me. <laughs> but you wait and see, Mordecai. You do not know what is in store for you and for all of the Jews. So, you will not bow before Haman. Aha! <laughs> but you will, Mordecai. Mark my words. You will. Oh, Mordecai. My worst fears are realized. Who knows what Haman will do? Why can you not just bow to Haman like everyone else? We are slaves to the Persians, Mordecai. Slaves! And Haman is second only to the king. And now you're going to get us all in trouble. Hilkiah, watch your tongue. Mordecai is an officer of the king's gate. Why must you disobey the order of the king, Mordecai? Why? Hilkiah, my son, you too are a descendant of Abraham. Your forefathers were with Moses when Jehovah delivered them from Egypt and from the hand of Amalek. Can you not remember that? But what does that have to do with the here and now? We are not in Egypt. We are under the law of the Persians. And when the king makes a commandment, it must be obeyed. Mordecai, Mordecai. Yes, Harbona, what is it? You look like one who bears bad news. I do indeed. It is the worst news possible. You know that Haman hates you and has vowed to avenge himself because you will not bow before him. Yes, Harbona. Speak, Harbona. What is it? What has happened? Haman had the king sign a decree against the Jews. Alas, our poor people. Our doom is sealed. I overheard Mimukin and Karshina discussing it just a few moments ago. It seems that Haman has offered to pay into the king's treasure 10,000 silver talents of his own 10, wealth thousand silver in order talents. to expedite the matter. But what is the decree, Harbona? What will the king do to the Jews? I do not know, but it must be a fearful thing because Mimukin and Karshina were both extremely agitated. Oh, Mordecai, how could you have been so thoughtless? You, a court official who sits in the king's gate. And now you have brought calamity upon us. We are finished. Let all loyal subjects of King Ahasuerus come near, and let all here, even from India to Ethiopia, in all 127 jurisdictional districts, by the word of Ahasuerus the king, let all the kings, satraps, and the governors, and the princes, and all the people become ready for the thirteenth day of the twelfth month to annihilate and to destroy all the Jews, young man as well as old man, little ones and women, and to plunder the spoil of them. So it is written, and so it shall be, in the name of Ahasuerus the king. Hadar the thirteenth, remember that day. You will not get off so lightly then, not one of you. <laughs> this is Mordecai's fault. I knew that he could bring calamity on us by refusing to obey the king's commandment. But we must stand together. You are just a... Of all of us. Mordecai alone has had the courage to uphold Jehovah's law. Mordecai has only brought trouble. May Jehovah forgive us, and may he turn back on the heads of our enemies the wrong that they would do to us. You are a fool, Misha, a fool. Jehovah has forgotten us. He has left us to die at the hands of Haman. What will we do? We are lost. We will perish. Oh, my people, my poor people. May Jehovah, the God of Israel, have mercy on us. Returned? No, my lady. He left some time ago, just as you ordered, and he had the garments to clothe Mordecai with. My lady, 
Why would Mordecai be sitting in front of the king's gate in sackcloth? He is a court attendant. What kind of trouble could he possibly be in? I do not know what grieves him, Bilka, but my soul is troubled for him. Mordecai is a good and a just man. Perhaps Hathak can persuade him to rise from the dust and bathe himself and put on the garments that I have sent him. But quickly, Verona, that sounds like someone at the entrance. See who it is. As you say, my lady. Hathak is indeed returned, my lady. Quickly, what did he say? He says that Mordecai has refused to be comforted. Refused? He even returned the garments that you sent to him. Oh, no! Return the garments? Then it must be a grievous matter indeed. What could trouble Mordecai so severely? Quickly, Verona, have Hathak brought in at once. Yes, my lady. Hathak, Mordecai did not listen to you or accept the garments? No. No, he did not, my lady. He refuses to be comforted. Never have I seen a man so sorely troubled. Then you must not delay. You must return to him immediately, so that I might know what this is about. Go at once to him, immediately. Yes, my lady. I do not understand it. Mordecai must be very upset. I am certain that it is a matter of deep concern, or Mordecai would not depart from his duties at the king's gate, nor would he sit before the gate of the king in sackcloth. I would not like to trouble my lady, but... I've heard it spoken quietly among some of the king's servants that Mordecai has powerful enemies in the king's court. Not everyone feels about him as we do. Whatever the problem is, we will soon know. Hathak should not be long. But quickly, Verona, I think there is someone at the entrance. Run, see if it is Hathak who has come with news from Mordecai. At once, my lady. Quickly, Hathak, what news do you have from Mordecai? I ran all the way, my lady. Oh, please forgive me. But Mordecai is indeed sorely troubled and with great cause. He has received news of the worst kind, and it concerns not only Mordecai. What do you mean? The king has sealed with his own signet ring and published a writing, a writing? at the instance of Haman. Haman. And it is to be carried to all the districts by the speediest couriers. Oh, but what is it, Hathak? And why should it trouble Mordecai so? Because it involves Mordecai. But not only Mordecai, my lady. It involves all of Mordecai's people. All his people? I have just learned that Mordecai is of the seed of Abraham, a Jew. Oh. Mordecai? And Mordecai has refused to bow before Haman according to the king's commandment. Because of this, Haman has vowed that he will annihilate not only Mordecai, oh, no. but all of Mordecai's people, all of the Jews. What is to become of us? And here is a copy of the writing, Look, my lady, the writing. which Mordecai has sent to you in order that you might see what has been purposed toward the Jews. But that is not all, my lady. Mordecai has strictly charged me to deliver to you this commandment. Forgive me, my lady, but these are the words of Mordecai himself to you. But this means annihilation for us on Adar the 13th. All of the Jews will perish at the oh, hands of the Persians. Poor people. Oh, poor people. Poor people. Poor people. But how can this be? How can Jehovah allow a thing like this to happen to his own people? Hathak, did Mordecai say nothing further? Yes, my lady. He specifically commanded me to tell you, my lady, that you yourself are to go into the king to implore favor for your own people. The queen? One of my own people? You too? Are you also of the seed of Abraham? The queen? A Jewess? But they are a slave people. And now this. This edict. Come into the king. Me. Unbidden? How can I? What is Mordecai thinking? What is he requiring of me? Hathak. Yes, my lady. You must return to Mordecai, and you must tell him that I have received the writing from his hand, and I have read it. My heart is broken because of what has come upon our people. And were I not in the house of the king, I too would be in sackcloth. But this thing he has asked of me, it is just not done. Everyone knows that any man or woman who comes uninvited into the king's inner courtyard, well... That person could be put to death. And remember, the king did not show mercy to Vashti. Oh! Only if the king holds out the golden scepter. That is the only way the person will stay alive. But as for me, I have not been called to come into the king now for 30 days. But I must do 
what I must do. The question is, how? Go, Hathak, quickly. Yes, my lady. Oh, oh, Queen Esther, how can you? Oh, my lady. It is too much, too much. What is to become of us? Why would Mordecai ask you to risk your life? Is this not a most dangerous course to take, my lady? It is too much, too much. How will the king view it if you come in unbidden? What if he interprets it as a willful spirit? Yes, just like Vashti. And yet, you are so unlike that haughty woman. But what is to become of us Jews? I too grieve for the Jews. But to ask the queen to sacrifice herself, it does not seem like Mordecai to do this thing. And why would Haman want to kill all of the Jews? Yes, why? But you, my lady, why would Mordecai ask you to go into the king? Why? What did he mean when he said that you must implore favor of him for your own people? Could he have known that I too am a Jew? But you never said. No one ever told us. I know. Nevertheless, I too am of the seed of Abraham. Mordecai is my cousin. Your cousin? The queen? A Jewess? But what Mordecai has asked me to do, I am certain seems right in his eyes. Never before have I questioned Mordecai in anything that he has asked me to do. Mordecai is like a father to me. He came to be my caretaker at the time my father and mother died, and his kindness to me has exceeded that of my own father. Still, this thing that he has asked me to do, I... Oh, my lady, think! You too come under the decree of Haman. You too are subject to annihilation on Adar 13. But how could the queen herself be subject to such a decree as this? No one would dare! If you were to go in before the king unbidden, you might lose your life anyway. Before you even had a chance to make a request of him, there must be another way. There must be. Surely Mordecai will reconsider. He cannot expect you to... Do not be concerned. I am certain that Jehovah will find a way. Mordecai has never failed to have Jehovah's blessing. And I am certain that in this instance, too, something will be done. But if you go into the king unbidden, of what value would your life then be to your people? Oh, quickly. I think Hathak has returned. What did Mordecai say, Hathak? Excuse me, please, my lady. I spoke with Mordecai just as you commanded me. Yes, Hathak. And what is his answer? His words were the same as before, my lady. They were not altered. Then there is oh. no hope. All is lost. But he must know that I am helpless to assist. Why does he further charge me to go into the king? Even if the king were to invite me, he is not aware that I'm a Jewess. He does not know. If I go into him unbidden, and then, in addition, reveal to him that I have, as it will seem to him, deceived him. Oh, my heart is torn in two for my people. How can I bear it when I must look upon the injury that will find my people? And how can I bear it when I must look upon the destruction of my beloved relatives? How can this thing that Mordecai requests, how can this be the way? Oh, Queen Esther. Oh, my queen. Hathak, surely you did not make it plain to him. Did you tell him that I have not been called to come into the king now for 30 days? P please, look, my lady. Excuse me, but I spoke to him all the words that you commanded me. And what I told you were the words of Mordecai just as he spoke them to me. In addition, he said, and these are his words, he said, Do not imagine within your own soul that the king's household will escape any more than all the other Jews. Oh, no! For if you are altogether silent at this time, relief and deliverance themselves will stand up for the Jews from another place. But as for you and your father's house, you people will perish. And then Mordecai added this, my lady. He said, who is there knowing whether it is for a time like this that you have attained to royal dignity? Go, go then and speak to Mordecai and give him this reply to his request. Tell him that Esther the queen has said, Go and gather all the Jews that are to be found in Shushan, and fast in my behalf, and neither eat nor drink for three days, night and day. I too, with my young women, I shall fast likewise. And then I will come into the king, which is not according to the law. And in case I must perish, I must perish. <laughs> So it
it is, my lord the king, that the rulers of Lydia are petitioning the king for an extension of their grant, giving them the rights to continue to draw on the resources of Syria for the building program that the king himself has authorized. What is taking them so long? And what are they using for building materials? Gold? This is insanity. Conquered people imposing on this kingdom's resources to satisfy their own greed. Denied. What next, Mimukin? An envoy from India seeks an audience with the king, my lord. And Wait. he requests... Stop, Mimukin. Who is it that has approached the king and is standing in the inner courtyard opposite the king's house? Why, it is Esther, the queen. Come, Esther, my queen. Come near, in order that I might hear what you have to say. See, I've extended to you the golden scepter, for you have found favor in my eyes. Look, my lord the king, your maidservant is at your feet. What do you have, O oh, Esther, my queen? And what is your request? To the half of the kingship, let it even be given to you. If to the king it does seem good, let the king, with Haman, come today to the banquet that I have made for him. A banquet? And you would have Haman come also? If to the king it does seem good, and if I have found favor in your eyes. It does indeed seem good. Your request is granted, O Esther. You men, have Haman act quickly on the word of Esther. As you say, O king. <laughs> youngest sons. How good it is that you have come. Have the others arrived yet? I want all of you to share with me in the grandest blessing that has ever been showered upon me. Truly, Father, you must indeed have good news for us. Your daily anger and gloom are gone this evening, and there is a glow in your eyes. My eyes only reflect the laughter that is in my heart, Dolphin, my son. <laughs> oh, I know, my father. That cursed Jew, Mordecai, was forced to bow to you today. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing could bring more joy to this household than to see that Jew squirming on a stink. Or to see his hands and feet mutilated and hear his wretched pleas for mercy. <laughs> or crying out to his god Jehovah to save his him. His god. Were not the Jews abandoned by their god years ago? And now they're slaves to us Persians. Persians? You are an Agagite. Though that Jewish dog Mordecai still tries to play the prince. But not for long, Aradai. The Jews are as good as finished. Annihilate it. Adar 13 is their fatal day. Father, what a bold plan. How is it done? With this ring. The ring. And a writing already sent to the farthest part of the realm. The king's signet ring. You are so clever, my beloved husband. But that is not all. <laughs> Esther the queen brought me into a banquet with the king. And tomorrow I am again invited to be with her and the king. Even the queen has chosen you out of all the princes for this great honor. You have indeed been exalted, father. Yes, but none of it suits me as long as I see Mordecai the Jew sitting in the king's gate. Adar the 13th is too far away, father. How can you allow this man to refuse to do you honor? Why do you restrain yourself, Haman? You are the second most powerful man in the kingdom. Don't tolerate this hateful Jew one more day, Haman. Hang him. Don't hold back your hand, father. <laughs> Let them make a steak 50 cubits high. <laughs> then, in the morning, tell the king that they should hang Mordecai on it. He will listen to you, Haman. Then, go to the queen's banquet and celebrate your victory. Your advice is good, all of you. <laughs> And that is what shall be done. Delphon, see that the sun does not set before this work begins. And tomorrow, when I return from the banquet, I will expect to see Mordecai dangling from the stake. <laughs> but listen, I hear my other sons arriving. Let us go in and rejoice together. I must tell them the good news. <laughs> Why is it that I cannot sleep? After such a banquet, 
I'm usually asleep before my feet are lifted to the couch. Oh, what keeps troubling me? Harbona! Yes, my lord. Harbona. Why is it that I cannot sleep tonight? Excuse me, my lord, but I do not know. It is as though something is weighing on my mind. What could it be? Harbona, have the books of the records of the affairs of the times brought in. Let me see if I can get this matter settled so that I can get some sleep before tomorrow. I do not want to be drowsy when I go again to my queen's banquet. At once, my lord. What force disturbs my sleep? Some strange power will not allow my eyes to close until some purpose is accomplished. But I do not know what it is. Why tonight? Are the gods displeased? Have I withheld my hand from doing good when justice called for action? Here is the scribe, my lord the king. <sighs> Read to me from the book of the records, scribe. If it pleases my lord, uh, where shall I begin? It does not matter. Go back a few years, and, and then we will go back further if need be. Thank you, my lord the king. Now it happened in the year that Esther was made queen, that Big Fan and Tiresh, two court officials of the king, doorkeepers, became indignant and kept seeking to lay hand on King Ahasuerus. And the thing came to be known to Mordecai, an attendant of the king sitting in the king's gate, and he immediately told Esther the queen. In turn, Esther talked to the king in Mordecai's name. So the matter was sought out, and eventually both Big Than and Tiresh got to be hanged on a stake. Ah, oh, yes! I remember! Those two good-for-nothing doorkeepers. How grateful I was to Esther and Mordecai! What distinction and great thing has been done to Mordecai for this, Herbona? Nothing has been done with him, my lord the king. <laughs> Nothing? Now it is clear to me why I could not sleep. The gods are displeased. A deed of loyalty, unrewarded. What is to be done to the man in whose honor the king has taken a delight? What is to be done to such a man, Harbona? This matter cannot be treated lightly. Mordecai saved the life of the king. His reward is long overdue. I must have counsel. Who is about at this time of the morning? Harbona, who is in the courtyard at this early hour? If it pleases my lord the king, I have just observed from the window that Haman is standing in the courtyard. Haman, you say? At this hour? How fitting that he has arrived when I need him most. Let him come in at once. Immediately, my lord. Now I will have this matter attended to and perhaps the wrath of the gods will pass. Ah, my lord the king, may Ahura Mazda bring you great blessings this day and smile upon you with pleasure. Draw near to me, Haman. Draw near to me. You are welcome above words. I am indeed grateful that I can be permitted this audience so early in the day, my lord the king. It is indeed most propitious that you have asked me in. It has been a night of troubled thoughts, Haman, and sleep has escaped me. But I would have your counsel, Haman. Oh, your favor is as the breath of life to me, almighty king. There is a question that I would ask you. It is this. What is to be done to the man in whose honor the king himself has taken a delight? To whom would the king take delight in rendering an honor more than me? As for the man in whose honor the king has taken a delight, let them bring royal apparel with which the king clothes himself, and a horse upon which the king rides, and a headdress that the king would wear, and let them put all of this in the charge of one of the king's noble princes, and they must clothe the man in whose honor the king himself has taken a delight, and they must make him ride on the horse in the square of the city, and they must call out before him, this is how it is done to the man in whose honor the king himself has taken a delight. What you have spoken is good, Haman. Quickly, take the apparel. Yes, my lord. And the horse, just as you said. Yes, my lord. And do that way with Mordecai the Jew, who is sitting in the king's gate. Yes, do just as you have said, Haman. Do not let anything go unfulfilled of all that you have spoken. Mordecai the Jew? Yes, Mordecai the Jew, who sits in the king's gate. Go quickly, Haman. As, as you say, my lord the king. 
more about the Jew. All oh, that this shit happened to me. Me. Hey, son, I'm having a day for the evening. <laughs> Jews, then you will not prevail against him. You will fail, Haman. You will fail. <laughs> Listen, who is coming? Two riders, coming quickly. Ah, it is Harbona, and another official of the king. Harbona is dismounting. He is coming across the courtyard. Prince Haman, is Prince Haman here? Here I am. Enter and speak your message. Prince Haman, the king has sent us to bring you in haste to the banquet that Queen Esther has prepared for the king. We must leave at once. The king awaits your arrival. jewels in your crown. Is it not so, Haman? Have you a good word for the queen? Oh, I do indeed, most noble lord the king. But her, her beauty puts her gems to shame. Wit and beauty do not prevail to chase your gloom, Haman. Does some secret sorrow gnaw at your heart? Sorrow? <laughs> oh, no, not so, O queen. Your servant only appears dull and lifeless, uh, in contrast to the charm and grace of your presence. Sadness cannot grow near you, <laughs> O Queen. Your words begin to have the old familiar ring. You gladden my heart, Haman. I too had thought a shadow covered you. But as you say, <laughs> the brightness of my queen makes all other matters seem dim. Here, Haman. And now, Queen Esther, the time has come for your request. What is your petition, O Esther the Queen? Let it even be given to you. To the half of the kingship, let it even be done. If I have found favor in your eyes, O King, and if to the king it does seem good, let there be given me my own soul at my petition, and my people at my request. Your soul? The lives of your people? We have been sold. I and my people. Yes, the Jews. My people. <laughs> we have been sold to be annihilated, killed, and destroyed. Now, if it was to be men slaves and maid servants that we had been sold, I would have kept silent. But silence is not appropriate when this annihilation would damage the king. Who is this? And just where is this one who has emboldened himself to do that way? <laughs> the man, the adversary and enemy is this bad Haman. Haman? <laughs> it is even so. Look how he cowers and cringes with guilt in your presence. Haman? Haman has sold you and your people to be slain? How could such treachery exist in my own palace? It is true, O king, for I am a Jewess, 
and Haman has given over to death all the Jews in your kingdom. My lord the king, I told you of a people who were rebellious against your laws. He bears false witness, O king. The Jews have labored to your profit. They have enriched your kingdom. But we are faithful to Jehovah, the God of Israel. For this reason, and this reason alone, Mordecai the Jew refused to worship Haman. So Haman found a way to annihilate us all, simply because he hates Mordecai. Mordecai? The man whom the king himself delights to honor? Yes. Haman, this has gone too far. You have pushed the king beyond the limit of his patience. Ah. I am going outside to the garden. Oh no, my lord the king. Oh, Esther, my queen. What is this thing you have done? Be merciful to me. How can your tender eyes look so harshly upon me? How can your sweet lips speak such damaging things? I, I am your loyal servant. Oh, Esther, my queen. See, I am on my knees to you. How was I to know that you too were among these people who are to be annihilated? Esther, my queen, you know that I meant you no harm. You must speak to the king in my behalf. He listens to you in everything. Please, I beg you, please. Haman, leave me. I command you. No, I beg you, think of my life. I am the first prince of all Persia. Think about what you have done. You must plead with the king. You are mad. Leave me. Leave me this instant. Guards. Harbona. Haman, you traitor. <laughs> Have you not betrayed me enough? And is there also to be a raping of the queen with me in the house? <laughs> oh, no, no, my lord the king. No, please, my king. You have misjudged me. Harbona. Remove my ring from his finger, and get him out of my sight. If it pleases my lord the king, there is something else you should know. Something else? Tell me, Harbona, hold nothing back. Also, you should know that there is a stake that Haman made for Mordecai, who had spoken good concerning the king. It stands in Haman's house, fifty cubits high. You men, take Haman and hang him on it. No! You have misjudged me! I beg you, no! Aspects of this 8 or 13 from what we first imagined. Ah, uh, yes, Panina. Jehovah has truly blessed our people by means of Mordecai. Oh, and by means of you too, my lady. Oh, yes, my lady. When I saw your courage in going in unbidden to the king, I asked myself, would I have that much faith in my God, Vishnu the Preserver, or that much love for my people? Then too, O oh queen, if you had perished, we all would have perished. But I knew that I could not have done what you did. Now, since the writing of Mordecai has gone out, I too have become a Jew. Listen, O oh queen. The sound of fighting. It is getting nearer. What does it mean, my lady? I do not know, Panina. Call Hathak. At once, my lady. It is good, Varuna, my dear, to hear you speak of your newfound faith in Jehovah. He surely is a god of saving acts who never... Here I am, O oh queen. What is your wish? The sound of fighting, Hathak. What does it mean? We do not know yet, O oh Queen, but you need have no fear. No enemy of the Jews could find his way in here. You are completely surrounded by your loyal friends and supporters. Never has Jehovah our God shown himself as strongly in our favor, O oh Queen. Oh, the guards outside your quarters look as stout as a young army. Oh, yes. The king has stationed the finest soldiers of his personal bodyguard around the queen's house. All of them loyal to the king and for the Jews. Look! Even the princes Mamukin and Karshina have sent armed men of their own attendants. You have all been a great blessing to me. 
and a genuine comfort on this fateful day. Excuse me, O oh Queen, but Mordecai is waiting outside. I was just about to announce his arrival. Hey, Beck, show him in at once. He is even at the door, O oh Queen. <laughs> oh, Mordecai, how good it is to see you. I feared for your safety. And I for yours, although I knew you were well surrounded by loyal soldiers of the king. But what of our people throughout the realm? Are they really to stand in their own defense? What do they have? How can they protect themselves? We do not know for sure. But in all the districts, the Jews have gathered together in their cities to lay hand on those seeking their injury. It seems that the dread of the Jews has fallen upon everyone. But is there anyone to back them up? To stand up for them and to fight? We have confidence in all the king's soldiers stationed in their garrisons in the cities. Even the princes of the jurisdictional districts, and the satraps, and the governors, and the doers of the business that belongs to the king, have arranged to assist the Jews because of the writing that the king has sent out to all the people. The sound of the fighting is getting stronger. Yes, the enemies of the Jews have entrenched themselves, particularly in Shushan the castle. But the sound of fighting that you hear is the sound of our people and of those who have joined themselves to us, avenging themselves on our enemies. Listen, the sound of fighting has changed to a joyful sound. Verona, please see who it is that would enter. Yes, my lady. Oh, my lord Mordecai, this has indeed been a day of exultation. Already hundreds of our enemies have died at our hands and also the sons of Haman have been killed. And my lady, Queen Esther, there is already great rejoicing in the castle of Shushan. But Mordecai, many of our enemies remain. They have withdrawn themselves, and it is now late in the day. What shall we do? Your report is good news, Hilkiah. But as for the rest of the enemies of the Jews, they must not be left, because in that way our victory would not be complete. Esther, you must speak to the king. Ah, uh, my queen, Esther, and Mordecai, you too. The Jews have indeed gained a great victory in Shushan today. In Shushan the castle, the Jews have killed and there has been a destroying of 500 men and the 10 sons of Haman. In the rest of the jurisdictional districts of the king, Mordecai, what have they done? Word has not yet reached us, my lord the king, but my people were well prepared. They were gathered together in their cities and our little ones and women were well defended. There is but one thing yet, O king. What is your petition, Queen Esther? Let it be done. If to the king it does seem good, let it be granted tomorrow also to the Jews that are in Shushan to do according to the law of today, and let the ten sons of Haman be hanged upon the stake that was prepared for Mordecai, and on which Haman was hanged. Let it be done that way tomorrow. Mordecai, give the law out in Shushan. The carcasses of Haman's ten sons are to be hanged and the Jews in Shushan are to gather themselves together also tomorrow, the 14th day of the month Adar, in order that their victory might be complete. And then let them proclaim a feast throughout the realm, and let there be a great rejoicing among the people. Oh, Mordecai, my lord, what a blessing it has been to our people to have you in position second to King Ahasuerus. Hilkiah is right, Mordecai. Your name has indeed become great among the Jews and delights them to the multitude of our brothers. For you have done nothing but work for the good of our people. Please forgive me for doubting you when you refused to bow before Haman. Now I know what it means to put faith in our God, Jehovah. Never again will I doubt his word or the ability of the true God to carry out his commandments. You have spoken well, Hilkiah. And now, Lest all of the Jews forget, and this day fade from our memories, it shall be written in documents to all the Jews that are in the jurisdictional districts of King Ahasuerus, the nearby and the distant ones, to impose upon them the obligation to be regularly holding the 14th day of the month Adar, and the 15th day of it in each and every year, to hold them as days of banqueting and rejoicing, and of the sending of portions to one another, and of gifts to the poor people, because Jehovah our God has brought this great salvation to his people.
What a story. Yeah, I never before felt that this account was so real. I felt the same way, Alyssa. And doubtless it's because of the situation we now face. What are we going to do, Brother Olderman? I wonder too, Ted. What does the future hold for us? Well, right now, the other elders and I are meeting with those in our service groups. Later today, the elders will reconvene when we have more information on what exactly is going on. But one thing is certain. We need to prepare our hearts for the trials ahead. And above all else, what did the account of Esther teach us? I know. What is it, Alyssa? That we need to show courage, just as Esther did. And if we do, Jehovah will stand up for us, just as he did for Esther. But let me ask you, how did Esther show courage? I suppose by going into the king uninvited even though she knew that it could cost her her life. Also, by cleverly exposing Haman. That's right. And if Esther hadn't acted courageously, her life really would have been in danger. And what about Mordecai? He refused to bow down to Haman. He stuck by his convictions, despite what others, even his own people, were doing. And that's precisely what we need to do now. We must be prepared to leave our lives in Jehovah's hands and stand firm for his laws and principles, just as many of our brothers and sisters are doing in other lands. We can face whatever trials lay ahead. And as we do, we know that in time, Jehovah will provide deliverance in a way that we couldn't have anticipated. That is so encouraging to us, Brother Olderman. We need all the courage we can muster right now. And that's why we need to rely on Jehovah in the days ahead. I have an idea. Why don't we say a prayer to him right now, so that we can show courage like that of Mordecai and Esther? That's a good idea, Ted. Would you represent us in prayer to Jehovah? I would be glad to.